حدثنا أبي بن كعب رضي الله عنه أنه سمع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن موسى قام خطيبا في بني إسرائيل فسئل أي الناس أعلم قال أنا فعتب الله عليه إذ لم يرد العلم إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى فأوحى الله إليه إن لي عبدا بمجمع البحرين هو أعلم منك قال موسى يا ربي وكيف لي به قال تأخذ معك حوتا فتجعله بمكتل فحيثما فقدت الحوت فهو ثم رواه البخاري Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, we are continuing to understand the miraculous ways of the Holy Quran and the chapters of the Holy Quran. And we had been dealing in last few khutbahs with the Surah Al Kahf, Surah number 18, the cave. And we had already talked about. <coughs> Dajjal and the fitna to Dajjal, the trial of Dajjal. And in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has focused in four different, different kind of trials which may hit the humanity and how to prepare against it and how to be successful in those tests. The first one was Fitna Fiddin. That was, and we learned the story of the people of Kahf, the equivalent of that, seven sleepers in the Bible, and how they, in order to protect their connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, went to the cave and Allah caused them to sleep for over 300 years. Then the second one was the trial through the material world. And we talked about it last week, that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon a person all the material wealth in terms of giving him gardens and palm, dead palm trees and all the rest of it to the extent that he became the disciple of shaitan and he started denying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he started denying akhira he started showing off by saying ana akthar minka malam wa a'azzu nafara superiority complex and how his companion reminded him that all that is shirk and shirk will never help a person if you continue to be connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means no matter how rich you are never think as Karun said innama utituhu ala ilmin indi that this is my smartness I got all this material wealth no whenever you have the material wealth it is bestowed upon you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you relate it even to your own self, that is a kind of shirk and associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many times we have explained the difference between a shirkul jali wa shirkul khafi. What is a shirkul jali? It is obvious association with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the partners. Like somebody is worshipping idols or worshipping anything or anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the most dangerous one is a shirkul khafi, the hidden shirk. Many of us may be committing that and we don't even feel about it. 
and that is doing things to show off to tell other people that I am so pious like he said ana aksaru min kamal wa ahsu nafar i am the one who has more money more influence more power so always relate that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says beginning five verses of surah al-baqarah wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun the people of taqwa are those who is spend from what we have provided for them so that was the lesson and the end result was a superiority complex did not help that person and he ended up losing all those bounties of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today we are going to speak and tell you the story of the knowledge and how important the knowledge is if you study the religions of the world the only section of the divine religious system that is al islam began with the word iqra you see read educate yourself that is the importance without reading your tasbih will not help you without reading you won't be able to do the right actions and without reading you will not know the shortcuts to the ridwan allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the good pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the greatest deed of righteousness but purpose of the life of a believer and even a prophet should know that nobody is perfect in knowledge nobody can ever claim that i know everything there are millions of professions in this world for each profession there is a specific knowledge you have to learn and that is the wisdom of the saying of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waj'alna ba'dakum li ba'din fitnah atasbirun what is the meaning the meaning these millions of professions among the human kind remind the humanity of the concept of oneness that's not only we believe in one universal god we also believe in one universal humanity a humanity cannot go a step forward without depending on each other you know you can't build a house unless you have so many profession working in that and you cannot maintain your own house unless you depend on so many different professions you see and that was the meaning of iqra bismi rabb bismi rabb means not only you should find out what do you do best because allah created everyone with different abilities individual differences not everybody can be the student of science you know some will be those others will be the students of art and so on so all profession may be failed and all the humans always know that you belong to adam and eve you are the one family of the humanity you are given the freedom of choice you may be different in your religion you may be different in your connection with each other and the way you would like to believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or even if you don't want to believe in that that does not release you from the relationship of the humanity which is waja'alna that is surah number 25 verse number 20 we made you ba'dakum li ba'din each one of you with other one fatna the reason for the trial atasbirun <coughs> the meaning is are you going to maintain your goodness 
by patiently persevering. So here, Imam Bukhari reported a hadith where Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu ta'ala anhu speak about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about this story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam that he was speaking to the children of Israel. So one of the person asked him, who is the most knowledgeable person? So Musa alayhi salam being Kalimullah being the most favorite of the prophets and messengers, being one of the ulul azmi min al rusul who have resort to fulfill their duties and responsibilities out of five, Noah, Moses, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, alayhim as He was one of them. So he thought, who can? Be most knowledgeable, more knowledgeable than me. So he said, I am one. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately reminded him that no, nobody can be most knowledgeable. And why did he not refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because unlimited knowledge and wisdom only and only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهُوَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ But Musa alayhi salam being a prominent prophet did not suffer with arrogance and pride. See, ordinary people when they say, Oh, I have the most knowledge, I have the most money, I have the most influence, I have the most power. They are saying it out of arrogance and pride. Musa alayhi salam did not say it out of arrogance and pride. He said it because he thought that he receives the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is Kalimullah, he speaks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore he concluded with that word. And as soon as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that that is not right, he said, please tell me. How do I find this person who has more knowledge than me? How can I go? And how can I be his student and learn more about it? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, take a fish. And when you lose the fish, you will find that person. You can read verses 60 to 82 from surah number 18 for this story. So they immediately start the journey. One of the disciples of Musa alayhi salam, Yusha ibn Noon, accompanied Musa alayhi salam, who was responsible to serve Musa alayhi salam. And they start the journey and they keep going. And Musa alayhi salam resolved no matter how long it takes. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go into the journey until you come to a place where two oceans are merging into each other. That is where you will find Abdam min ibadina. One of our servants. Now, there are a number of opinions. But when Allah says, Abdam min ibadina, it means he was another human being. Some people say it was Khidr, and Khidr is one of the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But of course, the words of the Holy Quran do not indicate to that. It was a human being who was given a different kind of knowledge by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to show people you know, like Abdullah Yusuf Ali, in his tafsir he says, we learn four things from this story. See? Number one, no one knows everything. See? There are, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهَلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ 
For every profession, there are professionals. So you need to realize that no matter how much knowledge you have, you only have one section, one small section of knowledge. Number two, constant efforts needed to continue to gain the knowledge and grow into your knowledge. Meaning, if you have gone through a particular course, like in my field, seven to eight years course for to become an alim or Islamic scholar, then you have other courses. But once you have done that and then you are not connected to the knowledge, you will forget everything. So a person like myself has to read every day four to six hours in order to keep your knowledge fresh and to continue to find out. You know, because the, as the, our Prophet وسلم, said in Surah number 20, verse number 114, Rabbi Zidni Ilma. Oh my cherisher Lord, continue to increase me in knowledge. No. You cannot be stagnant. You have to continue to move forward and continue to learn. So the second point he says, constant struggle in increasing your knowledge in order to initially benefit from that knowledge yourself and let other people benefit from that knowledge which is given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, there are paradoxes. There are things which will on surface be seen as an act of injustice. Like Khidr alayhi salam, what did he do? You know, he did three things. All those three things on the surface, if you do not know the reasoning behind it, you will say, oh, what a bad thing he has done. Though there is a wise reason behind it. So those paradoxes you will be seeing in this story. And number four <coughs> is that you cannot really know about any science, any knowledge, any discipline without a teacher. You may go to the library, you may go to Google, like many a time, People call me and say, oh, about this and about that, and I have seen in, on Google, this is uh, the thing. Then why are you calling me? So, you may get confused. You have to, you have to connect to the professionals. Do not depend on Chef Google. He may deviate you, it may deviate you from the real path. So you need a teacher because the teacher will give you, as I say in my college courses, you have two books as a textbooks. But what you will be getting in this class, the summary of 3000 books. You won't be able to get it by reading one book or two books. You see? So a teacher will give you the shortcuts and the summary of the 30 or 40 years of uh, studying and reading. So in any case, Musa alayhi salam asked his companion, you know, saying that we are tired and hungry, let's stop. So they stopped. When they stopped and he was to about to take the food out, he said, uh oh, we lost the fish. He said, when did you lose it? This is last time when we stopped. So he said, forget about the food, let's go. That is our purpose. So they went back and they came to that point and they found a person. And after the greeting and all that, Musa alayhi salam asked him, although he is a prominent prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is agreed upon by all the Islamic scholars 
that Khazr alayhi salam, this individual is not superior in his status to Musa alayhi salam. All that, yet, look at the etiquette. One verse of the Holy Quran, you can write a 500 pages book. That much etiquette in one verse in the Holy Quran, which can show the relationship between the students and the teachers and what are the etiquettes of going and learning. So Musa salam says, Hal attabi'uka. Ala. أن تعلمني مما علمت رشدا. So first thing is he is asking for the permission. So هل أتبعك this permission that can I be your student? Can I learn from you? You know. Second thing أتبعك. Attabiraka means I'm going to be tabi' to you. Meaning, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow your words. I'm going to follow your actions. You will become my role model. The word Attabiraka was used. And Ka, when you have this word, thirdly, it is the importance of the teacher and it is referring to that. And then you have the acceptance, you know, you confess, I need to increase myself into the knowledge. And I'm told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have a different kind of knowledge which I want to learn from you. Not only that, the next one is mimma ullimta. See? The knowledge is not related to this individual Khidr alayhi salam. No. Ullimta means you were taught. Allamaka Allahu. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught you. And then mimma, a portion of it. You know, as we know, the knowledge is an ocean. See, no matter how much you take care. There is no decrease in the ocean. That is why the knowledge ocean continues. Even if the whole life we spend in learning, it will be mim, it will be a small portion of available knowledge. <laughs> See. So here the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of the knowledge and appreciation of that bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and relating nisbah of that bounty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then rushda, see specific word, you know, you know a rushd wal hidayah. If you compare rushd with hidayah, Hidayah is a general term. You know, any kind of uh, guidance you can get through Hidayah. It can be religious, it can be you lost your way and you are asking somebody. And when you not generally speak about it, you cover all forms. So that's why we say, Ihdina Sirat al You know, you already have Hidayah. You are already a Muslim. You are already performing the prayer. Then why you keep on repeating Surah Al-Fatiha and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Nasrat al-Mustaqim? Meaning, you may have Hidayah but you may lose it. Like Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, a person may be doing the right thing all his life. Shortly before his death, he does the wrong thing and denies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and deserves to go to the hellfire. And on the other hand, a person may be doing the wrong thing all his life and when he seeks a hidayah and rushed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he may be guided and within the short period of time, he deserves to enter the paradise. <laughs> so when we say al-Mustaqim, we are begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, guide us to maintain, maintain up to 
the last breath of our life uh, to continue to be on this straight path. You know, so that is the a few things Mufassirin have written about it. Another thing they said that when you say Mimma Ullim Tarushda, you are talking about as Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whenever he used the word Ilm, he used Ilm Nafi'an. Beneficial knowledge, destructive knowledge is not spoken about here. It is beneficial knowledge. Then what is the beneficial knowledge? Beneficial knowledge is Lamma Yamal Bima Alim. When you practice what you know about this knowledge, you know. So Musa Kareemullah not only knew all the adab and etiquettes of gaining the knowledge, but in this word he has said it. And then Khidr alayhi salam told him that no, you can't follow me. قَالَ إِنَّكَ لَن تَسْتَطِيعَ مَعِيَ صَبْرًا وَكَيْفَ تَصْبِرُ عَلَى مَا لَمْ تُحِطْ بِهِ خُبْرًا How can you show the patience when you do not know? I'm not that kind of a teacher who will answer all your questions. I will keep on doing my things and you're not allowed to speak about it. You're not allowed to uh, criticize me. You're not allowed to ask any questions unless I volunteer myself to speak about it. See? So he said, I will. I will hold my peace. You know. So the time is over it looks like. We will complete this story inshallah next week and we'll start the fourth story as well. There are certain uh, requests for dua. So remember this uh, up to this point and inshallah we'll take it and complete it next week. Dua bishifa lil Kamal Muhammad Umar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him speedy recovery from his sickness. And dua the rahma wal maqfira for Munir Iddais. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him his maqfirah and place him in high rank in Jannah. And then we have another request to make dua for my mother. She passed away in Pakistan. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the mother of Rahmani Balloch the maghfirah and high rank in Jannah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant each and every one of us greatest of his bounty by guiding and giving us the tawfiq to practice whatever we are learning from the Holy Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'iril muslimina fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إرغاما لمن جحد به وكفر وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد الخلائق والبشر قال الله تبارك وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصام وصل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والصحابة أجمعين والتابعين وتبع التابعين وصلف الصالحين وأولياء الكاملين وعلماء الراسخين إلى يوم الدين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب الم 
المؤمنين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اغفر لجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين عباد الله رحمكم الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم فادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى اعلى واولى واعز واجل واهم واتم واعظم واكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون اقم الصلاه please come forward as much as possible